Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views for April 15, 2014. Yes, it is tax day here in the United States. I feel bad for a lot of us, including myself, but that's the way it goes. Let's jump right into the charts. I'm going to start off the S&P 500 E-mini futures. You're going to see that the futures are trading higher by four and a quarter points. They have pulled off off the highs of the day here. It looks like the dollar yen has come down. Uh, there was some economic data released. I think it was the CPI report, um, but you could see that dollar yen started to pull back in and as soon as that happened um, you know what happens to the futures they start to pull back in as well so futures nonetheless are still higher by about four points but they are off their best levels and uh, we'll see where they go today um, really before I forget um, there will be a lot of Fed governors and Fed speakers today all day long today you'll also have a quick speech from Janet Yellen and then she'll be speaking I believe in New York tomorrow so uh, again Two speeches this week from Janet Yellen. Just a quick opening speech today. Um, and then you'll have a bunch of Fed governors around the country that are all dovish giving speeches. And then tomorrow, Janet Yellen, I believe, will give a speech. So be aware of that. Uh, they're going to try to keep these markets up at all costs going into the uh, to the uh, holiday this weekend. So again, that's what I'm seeing, at least at the moment. But there are a lot of stocks in the news. Let's go to the first one, J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson. Stock has a strong gap up here this morning. Um, there's nothing really wrong with it. You'll have a little resistance at 100, but the reality is it has upside to around 103. I'm not sure if it gets up there, but um, there's really not a lot of downside. If the stock did crumble today by some chance, you want to watch the $92.30 level. That would be the intraday scalp bounce area. Remember, a scalp is just a quick day trade for about 10 to 30 minutes, but that's a good support level. I don't think we're going to see it right now, but um, if it does happen, you never know. Let's take a look at Coca-Cola. They reported earnings as well. Coca-Cola right now um, <clears throat> trading up a little bit. It closed at $38.73 yesterday. Right now trading at $39.60. Coke has a ton of resistance around $39.66 and more around 4026 so you can see it went through the first resistance point it's almost got to the second one I don't really see it getting much above that 4026 but the next resistance level I have which is a shortable level would be 4065 so coke got the 4065 4070 you can do a, a quick scalp short on that level um, that's what I'm seeing at least at the moment but nonetheless coke is higher after reporting earnings so we have to respect it at the moment now this is options expiration week so what I mean by that is the April ex expiration will be this coming Thursday it will not be Friday because the markets are closed for the Good Friday holiday but um, <clears throat> Thursday the markets will have the uh, will have options expiration for the month of April now that tells us the markets will 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 see a lot of game playing by the institution so you're gonna get a lot of upgrades and downgrades this week a couple stocks that were upgraded this morning one was Visa so Visa is catching a pretty nice bid. Uh, in all fairness, um, just be prepared. Market could be all over the place today. So, uh, but Visa is trading a little bit higher. The other one I'm seeing is Mastercard. Mastercard's trading higher as well. That stock closed at 71.18. Um, that is trading at 72.20. Big resistance level I have for Mastercard today is 78 dollars and 18 cents I'm not sure it's gonna get up there but if it does that would be a scalp level where you could short uh, MasterCard in my opinion so keep that on your radar I'm also seeing IBM ticking down today IBM has had a big move and then today you can see it ticking down below the 195.50 level it has rebounded a little bit it's now trading at 196.28 but yesterday's close was 197.77 I have a hard time seeing IBM get above 199.23 but if it does I guess it has clear sailing 205 so be a little bit careful there if it does get above there on a daily chart if IBM comes down it's got a long way to go so be very very careful trading IBM this week I'm not really sure where it's headed another stock I'm looking at right now is Pep Boys Pep Boys is trading lower after reporting earnings stock closed at 1197 yesterday it's trading at eleven dollars and twenty seven cents today the only level I see for Pep Boys the only level is 950. Gets to 950, I think you could pick it up there for a trade. Um, that's the only level that I'm seeing for Pep Boys at the moment. There really are no other levels on the stock that really interest me. Um, I, do I think it's going to get down there? I'm not sure. That's a long way down. But hey, you never know. If it gets there, I like it. Um, let's take a look at Zebra. Z-B-R-A. They bought out Motorola Solutions. 
Again, the stock is up on the news, which I have a hard time with. Um, the only level I'm seeing, and now you're starting to see it fade back down, but it's still holding that big gap so far. So the stock closed at 68.35 or so. Now it's trading up at 72.23. It did trade above 76, which I think is absolute insanity here. But nonetheless, it is what it is. Um, the level I'm looking at for this stock today, and I don't know if it gets there, but if it gets down to $61.90, $62, that's where you could play this stock for a bounce trade. Until then, there's not much or anything I would do with Zebra at the moment. Once again, they did buy Motorola Solutions, I believe, for $3.6 billion. So, again, it's a pretty decent move. Now, we're going to go into the gold market. Gold is getting slammed today. It's down $35, $12.92 an ounce. Let's go to the GLD. <clears throat> You can see GLD is trading at 124.50. Stock closed at 127.85. That is not a good move. Pretty sharp decline. Um, I'm not sure if this is related to China's sell-off last night in the Shanghai. The Shanghai was down about 1.4% last night. But we are seeing a similar type decline in copper. Copper is down 2.45%. Um, again, pretty ugly sell-off in copper. Now, not only the gold stocks down... You can see the GDX is down sharply as well. But you have a lot of the, the copper producers, mining producing stocks down also. Stocks like BHP Billiton, that closed yesterday at 71. It's now trading at 70.21. Rio Tinto, which closed at 56.86, trading at 55.56. Um, Freeport McMoran, which closed at 33.30, trading at 32.77. So anything that produces copper or mines for copper is lower this morning you want to be a little bit careful with that but we do have gold down copper down uh, China last night the Shanghai was down 1.4 percent that was a pretty good uh, rollover there in that market so be prepared um, gold is down now we also have oil down today now light sweet crude is trading down about a dollar to 10305 a barrel I believe so again pretty decent dip in light sweet crude let's go to the USO which is a good proxy for trading light sweet crude and you're gonna see that this is trading lower as well. 37.38 um, was the closing price yesterday on the USO. Today it's trading at 37.21. So it is showing a little bit of a dip. Again, I think oil um, can remain somewhat buoyant. I don't really see a sharp decline, but I could be wrong on that. Be a little bit careful. Um, anything that takes place in Russia or the Ukraine, it, it, is, those geopolitical events are definitely moving oil on, on a minute-to-minute, day-to-day basis. So... You have to be a little bit prepared for that. Don't take anything for granted there in that space. So again, um, watch and, and, and see what the charts are telling us. Right now, it's a little bit inconclusive on the oil chart. There's nothing I would do. If we don't have a good pattern or a good setup, we really just leave it alone. But that's about everything today. Um, again, it's going to be a volatile session. At least it could be. I don't know if the volatility index will go up. But it's going to be a, vol a potential volatile session today. Um, Watch the dollar yen. Keep that on your radar. <clears throat> All right. Right now, the dollar yen is starting to slip. If that happens, what's going to happen to the futures? They're going to start to slip. So, again, you want to be real careful here. Don't take anything for granted in this type of tape. Again, it's an up-down yo-yo type market this week because of the options X. But um, overall, we had some real serious selling last week. And um, after a little bit of a pause, we could see more of that. So be a little bit careful and a little bit guarded. And only trade the best chart pattern setups. Remember, Options X is this coming Thursday. So there will be a lot of whipsaw going on throughout the rest of the week. With that said, everybody, I want to leave it here. Have a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts.